what have we here, AMD? After the meltdown, inspector flaws and exploits that affected a large majority of Intel CPUs were discovered, you seemingly walked away unscathed. But apparently, your Ryzen chips have a few security flaws of their own, huh? 13 of them, even. Bet you're not so smug now. So in all seriousness, a security company called CTS Labs claims to have found various security issues with AMD's Ryzen and Epic processors. And as security is a major concern for many companies and users, we really should talk about it. And because I'm on the road traveling to Texas right now from Florida, that means that we're talking about it in my hotel room with my family sitting on the bed right behind this camera. So everybody, please smash the like button and just give massive support for my family for allowing me to bring this video to you guys while we're even on the road. We're in freaking Tallahassee of all places uh, on our way to Texas, as I mentioned, but th this video needed to get out. I thought it was important. A lot of other people are covering it, and so I wanted to make sure that we provided our voice on it as well. So that being said, many people in the industry, including us, smell a particularly fat and smelly rat when it comes to the security issue stuff. Since these issues could very well turn out to have impact on the security of a ton of Ryzen and Epic users, like we've mentioned, we would do well to take the research seriously so first, let's take a look at it, shall we? So as mentioned before, CTS Labs found 13 vulnerabilities in AMD's Ryzen and Epic chips, which are broken down into four classes named Ryzenfall. Yes, yeah, seriously, cue my Adele voice. Let the sky fall! Fallout, Chimera, and Master Key. CTS Labs created a website called AMD Flaws, which serves to outline all of the issues they found with the chips and includes a downloadable white paper on the matter that goes further into detail. According to the white paper, the Master Key vulnerabilities allow three distinct pathways to bypass hardware validated boot on Epic and Ryzen and achieve arbitrary code execution on the secure processor itself. It sounds super technical because it is, but essentially master key allows attackers to install persistent malware onto, ch onto the chip itself, after which malware can be used to inject malicious code straight onto a systems OS or BIOS and disable certain security measures. And yes, that is my baby in the background. I love you too. In order to exploit the vulnerability we're talking about, attackers will need to reflash the system's BIOS with a specifically crafted BIOS update. Usually to do something like that, you'd have to physically have access to the system in question, but the researchers explain that the vulnerability can often be exploited as part of a remote cyber attack. The researchers claim to have successfully exploited certain steps of the vulnerability on Epic and Ryzen processors and suspect that the same could be done with Ryzen Pro and Ryzen Mobile chips. The Ryzen Fall! <laughs> Let me retry that. The Ryzen Fall vulnerabilities, as the silly name would imply, only affects Ryzen processors, including Ryzen Desktop, Ryzen Pro, and Ryzen Mobile. This particular set of vulnerabilities are born of design and implementation flaws inside AMD Secure OS, according to the researchers, and at worst can let attackers take complete control over a Ryzen chip secure processor. The vulnerability requires access attackers to have local machine elevated administrator privileges to run a program and allows access to the secure processor via a digitally signed driver. Basically, Rise and Fall lets attackers run whatever code they want on the secure processor and gives them access to protected data and information stored in areas of your system that normally isn't accessible. The main threat to AMD's Epic server processors come in the terms of Fallout. The vulnerabilities in the Fallout class, similar to some of the ones we've seen so far, also mainly target the chip's secure processor, or more specifically, its bootloader component. Similar to Rise and Fall, these vulnerabilities could give attackers access to protected memory regions that are otherwise sealed off by hardware. The researchers also explain that this could enable attackers to steal credentials, plant malware, allow unauthorized reflashing of BIOS, and inject malware that's outside of the reach of most endpoint security solutions." End quote. Chimera is another Ryzen-only set of vulnerabilities, and they're mainly made possible by back doors inside all inside the chipsets of all Ryzen and Ryzen Pro workstations. There are two backdoors to be wary of. The first exists in the chip's firmware and the other exists in the hardware itself. These backdoors allowed the researchers to inject their own code into the chipset itself, which eventually let them manipulate the operating system running on the main processor. The researchers believe that a savvy enough hacker could exploit these backdoors to implement keyloggers, plant network-based malware, or even access very protect various protected memory areas. So in conclusion, the researchers state that they believe the vulnerabilities we just looked at put networks that contain AMD computers at 
a considerable risk, obviously. Now, we don't have to be security experts, and we sure as Sally aren't, to know that all of this sounds really, really bad. I mean, those are a lot of vulnerabilities that could cause some real damage if exploited correctly. But here's the thing, many people who are in the know suspect that there's more to this than just CTS Labs letting consumers know that they might be vulnerable to attacks if they're running AMD's Ryzen or Epic chips. Some believe that the research findings are completely fabricated while others think that the vulnerabilities might exist but their impact is being wholly overblown. Why? Well because there's just too much surrounding this whole affair that just simply doesn't add up. Firstly, AMD was only apparently given a 24 hour notice before the findings were published, which is absolutely insane compared to the industry standard 90 days. Researchers usually give companies a substantial grace period in which they can investigate the claims and try to fix the bugs before the information is made open to the public. Doing so allows the companies to mitigate the damage consumers might face. They can actually work on a solution. AMD was apparently caught off guard when they were contacted just a day before the information went to public and had this to say in response. This AMD I'm quoting here, we have just received a report from a company called CTS Labs claiming there are potential security vulnerabilities related to certain vari variations of our processor. Wow, that word just came out incorrectly. We are actively investigating and analyzing its findings. This company was previously unknown to AMD and we find it unusual for a security firm to publish its research to the press without providing a reason reasonable amount of time for the company to investigate and address its findings. At AMD, security is a top priority, and we are continually working to ensure the safety of our users as potential new risks arise. Apparently, there's reason for the short notice according to CTS Labs. They're, this is their side of the argument, including a section in a video where they state they want to let the public know about the vulnerabilities, quote, before it becomes a real problem for society, not after. End quote. In speaking to Motherboard, the company also stated that its decision not to give AMD more time before publishing their findings was, quote, a public interest disclosure, end quote. And also, quote, we are letting the public know of these flaws, but we're not putting out technical details and have no intention of putting out technical details, end quote. That answer isn't sufficient enough for many people online who are arguing that if CTS Labs really wanted to get the information out to the public as soon as possible, why does it seem like they had stuff like a very professional website as well as a semi-professional video ready to go for at least a few days now? If you look through the AMD's Flaws website along with its many well-designed graphs, illustrations, and graphics, it's not hard to think that all that work must have taken lots of planning, preparation, and work to get done in a day or two. And the video, which admittedly includes a very obvious stock video clips, also looks like it would have taken some time to produce. We can't say for sure, but it seems plausible that CTS Labs could have had more time to inform AMD of the situation, but chose not to and spent all of their time preparing their report and not just, you know, contact AMD. I don't know. But, but while all, that's all fine and dandy or not, really, depending on your definition of fine and dandy, there are a host of other issues experts are taking with the researchers' findings, including just how bad the vulnerabilities really seem. Many are saying that because most of said vulnerabilities require root administrator privileges, and in many cases sounds like you'd have to be in the same room as the system, it's unlikely that all that many users will really be affected. One argument from Jeremy Owens, chief tech editor at MarketWatch, is that if you had such high level access to the system, you could essentially do whatever you want anyways. Addressing similar questions, CTS Labs said in, AM in an AMD's flaw Q&A that quote, rise and fall, fallout, and Chimera do not require physical access to exploit, end quote, and that master key requires BIOS reflashing, but that is often possible by just having local admin on the machine and running an EXE. And then as for the, if a hacker already has admin privileges, you're already wrecked argument, AMD Flaw states in a Q&A that malware used with the help of these vulnerabilities can persist on the system and might be able to remain undetected indefinitely. Others though have also questioned the validity of the findings outright, but doing so might be a little too hasty. In response to similar criticism, CEO of Trail of Bits, another security forum, explained on Twitter that CTS Labs hired his company to confirm their findings and that they were given the research and a full technical report with proof of concept exploit code for each set of bugs. He then went on to say that, quote, regardless of the hype around the release, the bugs are real. 
accurately described in their technical report and that, quote, their exploit code works, end quote. Of course, there's no way to prove it unless CTS Labs makes the code publicly available, but in not releasing it, they've left many people doubting their claims. It was a massively ambiguous decision, but if they don't give out the code, then by their standards, they're protecting the, the public from not having access to the code and thereby allowing AMD ha to have some time to actually fix it. But moving on, the consensus in the security community so far seems to be that these vulnerabilities are likely very real, though not everyone agrees about how severe they might be. But there's something else surrounding this whole situation that's raising even more eyebrows, including ours. In case you can't tell, money. There's money involved. Many in the industry believe that CTS Labs and a company called Viceroy Research could be hyping up the impact of these vulnerabilities in order to manipulate AMD's stock prices. It sounds a little unlikely, we know, but it sounds more and more likely when you consider the reasons behind it. Firstly, let's focus on CTS Labs. The wording and overall tone of both their white paper as well as the AMD Flaws website seem to lean far more towards criticizing AMD rather than the tech itself. Gamers Nexus has an excellent article on this topic, including an excellent video, which you should definitely check out because they go into more detail than we do. It's gonna be right there. So they go into more detail, including various examples of the paper's aggressive presentation, including quotes such as the following, quote, in our opinion, the basic nature of some of these vulnerabilities amounts to complete disregard of fundamental security principles. This raises concerning questions regarding security practices, auditing, and quality controls at AMD, end quote. And then also, quote, AMD's latest generation Vega GPUs, which also have secure processors inside of them, are being integrated as deep learning accelerators and self-driving cars, end quote. Another example we found was not present in the researcher's white paper, but rather in the Q&A section of the AMD Flaws website, which reads, quote, we urge the community to pay closer attention to the security of AMD devices before allowing them on mission critical systems that could potentially put lives at risk, end quote. So Steve at Gamers Nexus puts it best by saying that this kind of language is, quote, fear mongering, plain and simple. Writing like that just isn't found in white papers like this and is seen by some to be aimed at scaring AMD stockholders into selling off their shares. But if you're really looking for aggressive language and fear mongering, look no further than Viceroy Research. If that name sounds familiar, it's probably because they analyzed CTS Labs report and released a 25 page evaluation of the information titled AMD the obituary. First off, the fact that Viceroy had a 25 page essay on the matter ready to go mere hours after CTS published their findings, that's a little bit more than suspicious. I mean, I type fast, but not nearly that fast. The turnaround time of the article is curious, but what's even more curious is that just like the white paper and the AMD Flaws website, this particular paper shares the same aggressively anti-AMD tone. And unlike CTS Labs, they don't even try to hide it. Don't believe us? Well, have a look at a few real quotes taken from Viceroy's analysis paper. They said, quote, we believe the issues identified by CTS are fatal to AMD on a commercial level and outright dangerous on an international level. And then also, quote, we believe AMD is worth zero dollars and zero cents and will have no choice but to file for chapter 11 bankruptcy in order to effectively deal with the repercussions of recent discoveries." End quote. And then also, quote, Viceroy's consultants advise that it would be blatantly irresponsible for any chief information security officer, CISO, or chief technology officer, CTO, to justify the purchase of AMD's products. End quote. Like what? What even is this? A research paper or a hit job? Well, many believe it's it's the latter. According to various sources, Viceroy Research has published false or overblown information in the past in the hopes of short selling company stock. And these allegations appear to not be without merit according to other publications. So according to an article on IOL published in January, Viceroy had published similar reports in the past, after which stock prices of the companies mentioned in said reports saw massive drops in share prices. In the same article, a veteran short seller is quoted as saying he views Viceroy's quality of work as second to none. Big shout out to Wesley Fick on Twitter for pointing us in the direction of this IOL article. Definitely made it a lot easier to get this pinned down. So no one could say whether Viceroy and CTS Labs are somewhat somehow connected, but it 
seems a little suspicious to us. What was even more suspicious to some was a disclaimer filed on the AMD Flaws website that states, quote, although we have good faith belief in our analysis and believe it to be objective and unbiased, you are advised that we may have either directly or indirectly an economic interest in the performance of the securities of the companies whose products are the subject of our reports. Oh my goodness. And then when asked about this disclaimer, CTS Labs responded by saying that they don't have any investment long or short in Intel or AMD. But do you know who does have a position in AMD stock? Did you guess Viceroy Research? Because you might be right. In an interview conducted with Via Phone, the founder of Viceroy, John Fraser Pairing, explained that, quote, his firm has a short position in AMD stock and that he intends to increase that position in light of our support for CTS Labs findings. You can't just make this stuff up, guys. There are even more pretty legitimate sounding arguments being made in favor of CTS Labs and or Viceroy making the vulnerability seem far more serious than they are, but going over each one would take far too long and we don't have the technical analysis to do it. So definitely we recommend places like Gamers Nexus and other entities that are gonna cover this far more in depth. So the entire thing, it's just a big old bag of confusion. On the one hand, there are many reasons to believe that the vulnerabilities found by CTS Labs are very real and potentially very damaging. As we mentioned before, a large majority of the security community believe in the report's validity to some degree, but there are far too many signs pointing to the firm releasing their findings for the wrong reasons for us to ignore the possibility of something majorly fishy going on here. But until AMD finishes its investigations into the matter, we won't know whether any of this is worth the hubbub everyone's making of it. In the meantime, though, we're not all too worried about the Ryzen chips in many of our systems, including our main editing ring, because no technical details have been released yet the chances of opportunistic hackers using the exploits seem relatively slim. So that's where I'm gonna leave this one, guys. My baby, he's getting upset. It's time for bed. It is 8.41, we've been on the road all day. Let me know what you guys think of the CTS Labs, Viceroy Research, all of that kind of stuff, everything surrounding the AMD vulnerabilities. Uh, just, just let me know your thoughts either down in the comments or over on Twitter on at UF Disciple. I'm keen to have a discussion with you guys. I want to know more. I want to link articles that you have found helpful that might go more in depth than what we found that are either in favor of CTS Labs findings or that might go completely against them. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this kind of more, uh, I guess, technical dive into to current breaking news that's going on. Also, be sure to get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech Channel, traveling to Texas, and I'll be on the road for a few more days, so the hotel room videos is what it's gonna be, but thank you guys so much for supporting us here at the channel. Really appreciate every single one of you. I'm gonna leave it there, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Cheers.